hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Seat boxes, that's the things that's underneath your seat in your Defender. They're made of steel and they can corrode quite badly sometimes, sometimes not as much. However, they do exhibit signs of corrosion very quickly. Now on the 110 project that we have, you can see here that the seat box has actually rotted through and this is on the uh, driver's side. So what we've got ourselves is a TD5 seat box which is in not very good condition. Uh, we bought it from eBay and we're going to do it up so we can use it. This thing has rust in the battery box here and if it's not left unchecked it's going to get worse until the bottom actually drops out of it. Now this is our task today is to strip these boxes out and I'm going to show you that they are actually quite easy to remove from the seat box so you can either repair them or replace them. You can see that they're not complete boxes but two sides and a bottom. I'm not going to show you how to remove the seat box out of your Land Rover, I'll just give you an orientation to show you where the bolts are. So along the back of the seat box it's bolted in um, to either a bulkhead or something like that and you can see the row of bolts along here, uh, they're nut and bolt. This part, if damaged or corroded, can be replaced. Right, so the floor has to come out and unfortunately the worst bolts on the Land Rover are on the floor pans whereas the screws that hold the transmission tunnel in, as you can see here, are fairly okay for undoing. Now you need to remove the transmission tunnel to be able to get your seat box out, which is a matter of taking these screws out. Floor pan ones, you may possibly have to drill them or grind the heads off to uh, remove them. There is an adhesive seal, you can see here, on the edge of the seat box. This is between the two parts. Now you might have to prise this to break the seal to lift the components out. With the door open you will see that there are M6 bolts and you'll also have your seat belt bracket here which is bolted through nut and bolt. Unfortunately these suffer badly from corrosion. As you can see this here has fallen to bits. This one is starting to go. Where the seat belt bracket was, you can see where it's completely corroded out. The seats are bolted in on four corners and these should be in two rib nuts if you're lucky, if not nut and bolt. One thing with removing seats, you'll probably find that you'll find all sorts of things that have been lost previously. Right, so you might have loom wires coming out of certain parts of the uh, seat box. In the case of the TD5, you have an ECU bracket and you have other electrics in underneath the driver's seat. These will need to be removed, obviously, or disconnected and put through. Handbrake gaiter is held in place with a couple of trim clips. Once that has been removed, the handbrake is held on by two bolts and you'll have to disconnect the handbrake cable. I also found that these are captive nuts. The rivets hold the assembly into place on the seat box. They can be removed. If you look very carefully, you'll be able to see that there are spot welds all the way through on the seat box. This is the aluminium parts, whereas certain parts are riveted into place. Now, this is what we are interested in. The boxes here are riveted to the seat box, which means we can remove them by drilling out the rivets. And it's as simple as that. So basically, I'm using a 5mm drill to cleanly drill out the rivet. Now with my set of drills I have a 4.5 or 5 which is sufficient, it's just the right size and of course you'll be needing a set of side cutters so you can remove the rivet heads that stack up on the drill. Okay so basically as I said you have sets of rivets that hold in the under seat boxes. You have them on the top where your backside sits under the seat and these rivets here are just basically drilled out. These are the top ones. You have them on the side of the seat box as well. There's a row along the back and along the bottom edge. You can see them here and basically at the front. So with a drill, it's just a matter of drilling these out. It doesn't take very long at all. And the bonus here, obviously, is that you can then fix it back onto the seat box assembly once they've been repaired, painted, or whatever you have to do with them. So this is the front edge. There's more rivets along here, and usually these are in better condition than any other parts of the seat box. 
And at the top here, you've got to be aware that once you've knocked most of the rivets out, the box will eventually just drop out. So we'll take all of these out. And on the final rivet here, we'll just remove this from the corner. Basically, you should be able to take the rivet head off and push the body through. Right, okay, so that is basically the underseat tray or underseat boxes removed. So what we're left with is just the aluminium assembly and the steel parts on the floor. Now, we've got to decide exactly what we're going to do with these. They're not actually in bad condition. However, these are slightly corroded. They do come worse than this. On the underneath side, we have the breather for the battery box. Uh, this is all corroded, and I haven't seen one that hasn't yet got corrosion on it, but it does seem to be in good condition. You can source and buy underseat trays for your Defender, but with this one, it's rusted maybe not all the way through, so we might be able to recover this. It's going to be uh, one of these things we're going to have to clean it up and see. The most worrying part is the aluminium um, sections of the seat box. As you can see, the white powder is steel and aluminium corroding together. And it's easy enough to actually straighten the aluminium parts of the seat box out. That's not too much of a problem. If it's corroded, then possibly the parts can be replaced, fabricated, and then refitted back onto the box. Now, these screws, these fittings, easy enough to remove basically you can unscrew them from underneath or just bend them over and pull the whole clip out like so there's plenty of sealants on the seat box which need to be removed the underside generally doesn't need to be painted however we need to clean this up before we reassemble it again the sealant that Land Rover used to seal the floor to the seat box is a type of a tape which never goes really hard this can be scraped off and then the remainder wiped off with some standard thinners. We're going to have to remove the corrosion off this seat box, clean some of the paint down, and then assess it for the repairs we need to get done on this. The seat box is near enough totally repairable. There are panels available. So what we're going to do now is assess the damage on this and then get back to you later in the series and show you what we've done to this to make it viable to use again. I've also been quite busy reconditioning bits and pieces, one of those being the heater box here, and shortly we'll be showing you how to fit in a uh, upgraded heater matrix to uh, give you a bit more heat in the cabin. But until then, you know there's plenty of videos to watch, so stay tuned.